Welcome to the basement headquarters of the 1010 Club and to my first mod video. No surprise, I completely screwed it up. I got a Casio Royale recently, the metal version. I thought it looked so cool, but I also thought it looked so wordy. Too many words on that dial. I saw a few videos of people modding them, some very popular ones from Just One More Watch. Uh, Texas is another video account, video account. <laughs> Am I my grandfather? Another YouTuber who I watched do this mod. I said, let me try it for myself. It's not as easy as it looks. I got to tell you, it's hard and my hands got sweaty and I totally screwed up something that ruined the way this watch looks. I did keep going though and I did learn from these mistakes. So let's head bang to the intro as we re-head back down into the basement. That'll make sense once you see the intro. And then I'll show you how I screwed up my Casio Royale and how I tried to fix it and how still I ended up with something that I'm very happy with. All right, taking one last look at Casio's loquacious dial. It's like a dictionary on there. Time to get some of those words the hell off my watch face. Enter Gugon, the first mistake I made. It's actually a mistake in two parts. The first mistake I made was thinking I could very carefully pour the Gugon into the cap and just dip my Q-tip in when I needed it. As you can see, I immediately spilled this all over my desk. And Gugon is, it's oil. It's a citrus oil. Luckily, it smells nice, but it does not come off easily. It gets everywhere. It stains stuff. They tell you all these different services not to use it on, so don't use the cap. Tip number two, it's going to take way longer than you think, so don't go in here thinking that this is going to be a two-minute walk in the park and you'll be gone. Let's do the math. It's 123 on the watch, so we'll keep track of that to see exactly how long this takes as I just start rubbing away, try to make that illuminator get lost. Entering fast forward mode because we need to. All right, so two minutes later, nothing at all. You can see a little bit on the Q-tip, but it does take two more minutes before we see any progress at all, although it is pretty good progress. Let's dip again and start rubbing until it's gone. I should have stopped there. That's what we call foreshadowing. So you can hear this is what it sounds like. <laughs> and it's so hard to do it on camera that most of my time was spent off camera making that noise. It's either cleaning a watch or rabbits are mating. Okay, you can just start to see where I screwed up. And it's right where I'm pointing. The goo gone, as I learned later, not only takes off the paint, it takes off the other paint, thanks to Texas, his YouTube channel was very helpful afterwards. But as Winston Churchill said, when you go through hell cleaning a watch face, you keep on going cleaning the watch face. I believe that's the direct quote from Mr. Churchill. So I just had to keep doing it. And again, it takes forever. I scrub and I scrub and I rub and I rub and it looks like nothing is happening until something happens. It's so weird the way this works. It seems like nothing in the world is going to take this paint off and then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone. Although it does take a lot of time. Now, it does look clean, doesn't it? Except for, ugh, I took off the silver right there and you can see it. It looks like a scratch down to the plastic. Ah, that, it kills me. It kills me every time I look at it. But that does not mean we're going to stop. So, Enter screwdriver number one. This is another tip. Uh, you need a small Phillips head screwdriver to take off the back of this Casio. And that did not come in my watch tool kit that I bought. Pretty disappointing, to be honest. I had to try several different flatheads before I gave up and went to my actual toolbox in the other part of the basement and grabbed some Phillips heads. Now, Phillips heads? Phillip heads? Phillip head. You know what I'm talking about. It didn't fit either. It was too big. I had to go back to the flathead. Also put a polishing cloth underneath so I didn't scratch the hell out of the watch face that I was grinding into the table. And then it finally worked. So minutes later, because I have giant gorilla hands and these are tiny, tiny screws and tiny, tiny screwdrivers, I got the back off. My first thought, because I'm dumb, is, oh, let me just pop this 
easily off. Second thought was, let me just have it fall out. Nope, nope, nope. Hey, Jonah, you got to get that rubber ring out. So we get the rubber ring out. At first it was daunting, but the ease at which this came out, don't worry about it at all. See? And then it's just a lot of kind of poking and prodding, but very carefully, of course, inside, like where the pushers meet the module, right in there is where these little spring kind of things are that release the module. I like saying that word, <laughs> module, <laughs> from inside, but it does take longer than you think. Again, you got to be careful. I'm using metal on metal, not necessarily the best idea, but eventually I got it out. And because we were pressing on the inside of where those buttons connect, I started at the stopwatch by accident, and you can see it took me over 35 seconds <laughs> to get it out. It does look kind of cool, though, just like that. I know there are some mods where they take out, like, the plastic dividers between all those little images. That could be cool, but I am definitely not ready for a mod as technically demanding as that. But there is what I'm going to be rubbing on again. This time, though, I thought I would do something else. I'll get to that in a second because Gugon is dumb and I hate it. Well, I'm, for this particular instance. So cleaning off the workbench so we can try this one more time. But instead of Gugon, we're using rubbing alcohol. Thanks again to Texas's YouTube channel for suggesting rubbing alcohol versus the Gugon. He said that this should take off the paint, but not the other paint. And that's exactly the problem I ran into with the silver watch face. So I start rubbing again, and you're going to need a lot of pressure. So maybe I'll put my finger behind it. Will that work? I have to be honest, this entire time, I was just nervous I was going to crack it. Again, I got these big bumbling hands. Not really. Oh, no, it does come off a little bit. But you can see... There is also some black on the Q-tip. You'll see that again coming up. So I started getting worried that not only was it taking off the paint, but it was taking off that black stuff as well. It looked a little less shiny, as you could see, but you'll see in the end, it's going to work out. I'm not going to bore you with all the rubs because you just got to go and do it with everything. I did the time, the mode, the set, the world time, everything but the Casio and the 100 meters water resistance. I like those two. And plus, I mean, that's basically what's on every watch. So just rubbing and rubbing. And one of my issues that I will cover later too, I think was just aim. It's very hard to see, like it's a small surface and these Q-tips are not surgical instruments. They're just a ball of fluff. So you think you're rubbing on the right spot and you might not be, but after all those rubs and all that time, check it out. Pretty freaking clean, I think. So. The easy part, or so I thought, was putting it back together. This part easy enough. Don't forget, as I was reminded from just more One More Watch's channel, to put that rubber ring back in to keep the water resistance. You can feel it, actually, against the case back when you screw it back in. You could feel it kind of squeeze down, which is very satisfying, to be honest. And also, uh, remember, hey, did I mention my bumbling hands? <laughs> Getting these tiny screws in was the worst part of the whole day and yeah i remember i ruined my watch face but getting ugh, i was just my hands were getting so sweaty i was getting so frustrated i couldn't handle it so let's just skip ahead to the final product and there it is doesn't that black just pop way more without all those busy words i mean everything it just makes it look well, obviously cleaner i literally cleaned off half of the dictionary but it just uh, I'm, I'm very happy i did it in the back of my mind, I mean, I'll talk about this more in a second, but I, the scratch, I'll always know it's there. But even from here, it is kind of hard to see. But if we're looking together, which I know we are, it's going to come into focus. And that's all I'm going to fixate on. All right, one last test. Make sure those buttons work. Do they work? Yep, it worked. I promised it worked. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and the last thing, I spilled the alcohol because I didn't listen to my own tip and I put it in a cap again. I'm dumb. I spilled everything. Okay, back to me. And here it is one more time. Am I happy with it? Pretty much. Did I say that with a straight face? I am, especially if you look at it from far away, it looks great. When you get up close, you obviously see the thing I completely screwed up. The missing paint is 
well, it's a little hole in my heart right now, to be completely honest. But it doesn't stop there. When you get it into light, like good light with angles, you can see, and I'll probably edit in some footage, that all around you can kind of tell where I didn't completely get the lettering off. But from here, or even from just two more inches away from your face, you can't tell. And especially no strangers will be able to tell. And I do think this watch looks way better without all those words on it. Do I need better Q-tips? Probably, because I swear I thought I was rubbing here and I was rubbing there, or I was trying to get in and rub that. I can't keep saying rub like this. Somehow my aim was off. That has to be it because every YouTube video I watch, they seem to have no problem at all. But that's one of the reasons why I'm here to show you from a definite certified amateur perspective, how some of these flashy YouTube videos could actually go. I am still very happy with it. I'm so happy that I did it. I'll put the links to Texas's video and also Just One More Watch's video. When they did this mod, they did a way better job than I did. But if I can do it down here in the basement in St. Louis, Missouri, you can do it wherever you are. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, please, below, and I'll see you soon.